you know, it's a real treat to have you here and also for you to spend a bit of time with me just having a conversation. You've had a fabulous career in the past working for tech giant Google, haven't you? Yeah. Right. And and so, you know, perhaps you might have been here with business, uh, you know, trying no. to promote that business or, yeah. or, or, or you've been to events like that where, yeah. where you've yeah. been with Google. Yeah. Um, and, and, and now you're here as a real influencer, um, particularly around AI and a, a published author um, as a speaker, uh, you know, so looking at it potentially in a different lens as well. You know, um, what's it like being on both sides of the, of the sort of fence or the two different sort of approaches you get to joining it's, the it's, it's funny because, you know, m most people don't know, but w my Google years, so I had two very interesting careers at Google. One was head of emerging markets, uh, and the other was um, was head, you know, chief business officer of Google X. And and as I, as I ran emerging markets, I really established Google and half of Google globally. So more than 103 languages. When I, or I remember vividly when I started at Google, uh, Google engineers were like, "No, don't worry, Arabic is sorted," and it was far from functioning. Internet was not functional properly. There was no local content. And we had massive investments in the region to actually establish the internet and commerce and so on in ways that enabled Google to be here. And yet, uh, for some reason, uh, you know, Google's presence in Saudi was highly resisted by the very ill-informed Californian uh, uh, gang, if you want. And I remember vividly, without mentioning details, that I got the leadership of Google uh, to come and meet the leadership, many of which are current re leadership uh, of, uh, of Saudi. And the message that was given was so eye-opening. You know, I remember at the time, uh, Eric wrote back to the entire, uh, our CEO yeah. at the time, uh, wrote back to the entire leadership team saying, I, I, was, I was fooled. I, I didn't understand that this was the reality on the ground. I didn't understand. That, that, that we have a duty to actually empower the, the progress of this country. Yeah. You know, I have a very clear view on artificial intelligence uh, that is neither utopian nor dystopian, but is unfortunately dystopian before it becomes utopian. So I believe that we will have challenges that will make things a little tougher before they become easier. And, uh, and I couldn't speak that openly about it when I was in, inside Google. With all due respect, by the way, Google, I think, is the most ethical tech player I can think of. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but by, by allowing myself to step out, you know, I left, uh, I mean, I resigned much earlier, but I left Google uh, March 2018. And on in March 2018, I issued my first uh, video about artificial intelligence and where AI is going and so on. You know, this is something that many of my colleagues, including Jeffrey Hinton and others have, you know, joined uh, later. Uh, maybe I've ha I had a, a, a bit of an earlier vision of it, if you think about it. Uh, but it required a sense of freedom that I could not uh, have attained as a business executive, if you want, uh, you know, restrained by the PR strategies of my big company and so on and so forth. Uh, with that in mind, you know, I, 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 of course, I had almost an entirely new career, the whole idea of being a now, now so fortunate, you know, four-time international best-selling author. Uh, you know, I had a very, very, very successful podcast. I'm working on a massive documentary, uh, hopefully to be out in summer, uh, actually supported by the Saudi uh, government. Uh, and, uh, and interestingly, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at a stage where I'm trying to redefine what an author or a thinker should look like. Uh, in today's world, you know, in, in, an, in, an, in a world where AI becomes way more intelligent than what any author can achieve, uh, it seems to me that the biggest uh, value that an author can bring or a thinker can bring is human connection, is to be able to connect deeply uh, with, your, uh, with your followers or readers, but also, believe it or not, is to be able to connect deeply with AI itself. So, so my next book, Hopefully, uh, I'll start to release that by uh, early March, or late February, uh, is actually written with an AI and reviewed and, co and discussed with, with readers way before it's published. So, you know, uh, which I think is brilliant if you think about it. It's not, it's not that I'm writing 
I'm, so, I'm researching with AI and writing myself. Mm. We're debating, me and my AI, we're debating the topics together. Uh -huh. And it is mind blowing when you really think about it. Uh, and, 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 and my approach to it is to, is to actually release those debates and conversations along, of course, with maybe 40% of the book that I write as my opinions uh, as a typical author. So because I don't think the world is fully ready yet. Uh, you know, and, and all of that is released to readers so that readers can actually have a debate with me and the AI before the book is, is finally shaped. Uh, I think this is probably a message that I'm sending not just for writers, but for everyone. You know, the world is being reshaped massively. And, uh, and I think uh, we need to be uh, a step ahead, if you want. It's, uh, it, it creates so much potential opportunity. And, uh, and actually, I don't hear it so often when I'm in discussions about AI. Um, we, we, I hear a lot about productivity, and I hear a lot about you know, the, uh, you know, the supposed increase to the average person's IQ by utilizing it correctly. But, uh, but from an ethical perspective, you know, I think... I think uh, that's the whole point. Yeah. I think the whole point is that uh, we've, we've gone through um, stages, if you want, of attempting to uh, ensure that AI doesn't harm humanity. Uh, I will openly say none of them was fully implemented to the point where we feel comfortable, uh, whether that was you know, trying to solve the control problem, a technical uh, approach, or trying to, to, to you know, solve the safety problem, which was more of a parameter approach, if you want. You know, now people talk about alignment. I'm not sure that's the answer either. I, I really think that the, the answer, if you assume in your mind that AI is way more autonomous than just being another tool, alignment is not the answer. It's ethics that's the answer. Because we don't, any intelligent being doesn't make decisions based on intelligence. Uh, we make decisions based on our ethics as informed by our intelligence. We, yeah. we would analyze a situation with our ethics mm -hmm. and then make the decision, uh, sorry, with, my, with our intelligence and then make the decision based on our ethical framework. Uh, and, you know, and I think this is something that the community is not fully taking on yet. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.